2023 Maserati Ricale GT. The Ricale that I'm in right now is a very important vehicle for Maserati. I mean, I would say it's probably their most important release since the Levante, and that was like six years ago. So check it out, here's the deal. Maserati is in the midst of a rebrand of sorts, and they've taken a three-pronged approach to revealing this rebrand to the public. So the first car, or the first prong, was the Maserati MC20, a real technological tour de force. They're coming out there, they're showing people that yes, we could still build a supercar. We are an Italian car company and we have performance in our blood. So that was the first one and I think that was pretty well received. I haven't driven it, but from what is being said out there, the, the MC20 is a very capable um, supercar. It's a respectable supercar. Then part two and three were the Maserati Gran Turismo, which has always been kind of a halo flagship product for the brand. And number three right here, which is what we're in today, is the 2023 Gricale. The Gricale sits right underneath the Levante in terms of Maserati's overall lineup, but it also functions as a new entry-level model for the brand. I would say the central theme of the Gricale for Maserati is that of newness or innovation because almost every single thing about this car is brand spanking new. Let's get into it. First area of newness and maybe the most visually noticeable is the new design language. Now Maserati for the last few years has been pursuing a very aggressive design language with the Levante and the Ghibli. And for this new era with the Gricale and the Gran Turismo, I think they've really softened that up. You know, they've gone for rounder lights in the front, softer lines overall, a smoother look. To me, it's very evocative of kind of 1950s, late 1950s, early 1960s era Italian car designs. And this Gricale really harkens back to that era. And I think it works really, really well. I'm a big fan of the round-ish inspired headlights and the way they play with the more aggressive Maserati grille. It really makes the front end look unique on the road. The lines going through the body are very smooth, very classic. Similarly, in the back, they've kind of massaged the existing design language that they already had to just make it a bit smoother. And the overall look of the car to me comes off as being a bit more refined, but also very performance focused and aggressive. I'm a big fan of this new style language for Maserati. It looks very Italian and that, that's a little bit refreshing compared to the other competition that's out there. The next area of newness can be seen in the interior. And honestly, <laughs> Maserati kind of needed it because the interiors in the existing cars were starting to look and feel a little bit dated. And they've really reworked this completely on the inside. Brand new technology, beautiful digital dashboard, very crisp, high resolution, no lag at all, super smooth, great new infotainment system in the middle. It's still Uconnect, but it's now based on a updated version of Google's Android OS or Google OS platform. Works great, I've always been a fan of Uconnect and this one's no exception. Everything is, is uh, very fast, very intuitive, very fluid, and it looks great. The resolution is great, it's widescreen, love it. Bacale, not only has brand new technology in the inside, but also a brand new interior design language. But they've done it in a way that still preserves the kind of like the heritage feel of Maserati as a brand. So it has a very traditional kind of dashboard. You still have the clock, that's a Maserati hallmark, but it's now been digitalized. So you can have a clock or a compass or a G-force meter. So it's a bit more uh, dynamic now, which is great. And just the way the interior is put together overall, has a really nice blend to me of having a very traditional look combined with a look that's simultaneously very modern. The materials in here are incredible, very high quality leather, great deviated stitching, beautiful attention to details through material choices like the knurling on the vents and the clock, or the, the speaker grates here, or the material choice for the door cards and the center console. All that put together with that styling language and it's a beautiful place to be inside and really elevates the driving experience. It makes you feel like you're in a proper luxury car, a proper Italian luxury car, and I love it. It's great, fantastic. Historically, Maserati as a brand has kind of relied a lot upon Ferrari's 
um, inventory, so to speak, of powertrains, the V6 engines and the Quattroporte, Levante, and Ghibli, the block in those V6s was from Ferrari, and the V8 engines of those cars was just a straight up Ferrari V8 put into those cars. That's not the case for the Gricale. The Gricale starts off with a two liter turbocharged four, and that's what we have in the model today, the GT. The Modena also has the same engine with a slightly different tune. And that's based on a Alfa Romeo engine family called, I think it's called GME, but it's their kind of two liter turbo four developed in-house by Alfa Romeo that now Maserati, along with many other uh, Jeep products, is leveraging. It's smooth, no real turbo lag, delivers the power very smoothly, nice big wide power band, great to use in day-to-day -day driving. Two hundred ninety-six horsepower in the base model here. The Modena, which is the middle trim level, three hundred and thirty-esque horsepower. You also get a limited slip differential with that model, but and a couple of other things. I think adaptive dampers. And whilst this is just a two-liter turbo four, it sounds pretty nice. It sounds really good. <laughs> Trofeo though, that has the real spicy engine. That has the Natuno twin turbocharged V6 straight out of the MC20, 530 horsepower. That is an insane engine to have in a, in, in a everyday kind of consumer car. But it really shows that Maserati is not playing around like we talked about earlier. They show they have the performance chops and they really want to waste no time in getting that engine out there to as many people as possible. And I would love to drive that Trofeo model. Current Maserati cars, Ghibli, Levante, Quattroporte, were all on the same platform, and it was a platform that was really getting long in the tooth. It's over a decade old. The Gricale is on a brand new platform, brand new architecture, shared with the, again, the Giulia and the Stelvio, and also the Jeep Grand Cherokee, interestingly, but it's the Alfa Romeo Giorgio architecture underneath. And this platform, super comfortable in day-to-day -day driving, really soaks up the bumps well, even with this passive suspension in the GT model. Very smooth on the highway, great long distance cruiser, and it's also very confidence inspiring on back roads. Actually, this car is a back road demon. It handles great. Maserati has done a lot of new things with this car. Brand new styling language, brand new interior design, great new powertrain options, completely new platform for the brand, and it seems to have worked out very well. I'm a big fan of this car. It's very well put together, feels like a real luxury product, a real Italian luxury product, very unique in the marketplace, doesn't really feel very cookie cutter, stands out a lot. Personally, with this first application of the new Maserati, so to speak, I'm impressed and I'm excited to see where the brand goes with this going forward. In my mind, the purpose and the mission of the Gricale is clear. They clearly want this to be the Macan equivalent. The, the Gricale is to the Macan what the Levante is to the Cayenne. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big product for the company. They've executed it well. And uh, I have no doubt that we will be seeing these everywhere because for the first time, it feels like getting a Maserati has no real compromises against its competition. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Would you pick this car? Would you pick the, the tried and true Macan or any of the more established competition? I'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. See you next time.